welcome. We are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Today, we have a great surprise for you. We have a wonderful gentleman. His name is Ron St. Angelo. He is an award-winning professional photographer. He's the former official photographer of the Dallas Cowboys for 30 years, and most recently a photographer for the Catholic Diocese of Dallas. And just his gift that God has equipped him and anointed him yeah. with, and uh, we went and researched him, looked at all his stuff, and it, it, it's yeah. rather spectacular when yeah. you're a gifted photographer. Absolutely. I am not that. I'm not... Usually somebody else needs to take the yeah. camera. I'm not good at it, but but yeah. what a gift. And he's sharing it with the church. And he has a great name. Yes. I mean, Ron St. Angelo. When I first heard about him, you know, and they, they said, well, you know, we're in contact, you don't be with this person. And I was like, how can you say no to Ron St. Angelo? Let yeah. me find out who this guy is. And uh, he's been such a blessing to get to acquainted with mm -hmm. him. And I don't know if we said it in the introduction, but he's a, uh, he did two tours in Vietnam, right. mm -hmm. uh, United States Navy. Uh, he's injured there. And uh, we had Guy Gruders on, on Monday, Vietnam veteran, prisoner of war and so on. And we're not too far from July 4th, so with that whole week. Mm -hmm. And it's just always such a privilege for me to be with a veteran. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we thank God for Ron and for all of our service men and women who have served in various capacities. So we thank God for his life there. And um, he loves his wife, Joanna. Mm -hmm. So I hope that he speaks about her. I think he says, uh, he knows what it means, like gift gift of God yes, and the gift that she, she is in mm -hmm. his life. So it's a beautiful, beautiful relationship for 43 years now mm -hmm. they're married. But he really sees this photography as a calling, a gift from God, a tool of evangelization. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many pictures will be going up of his time with the Dallas Cowboys and then other, he's done many other images, right. religious art and so on and military images. And But what a gift. And I do believe he has a gift from God and he's honed his craft to do something really beautiful for God and it really lifts up the sanctity and dignity of the human person yes. when he takes these shots it's like they're right there. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back while well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Ron St. Angelo. He is an award-winning professional photographer. He is the former official photographer of the Dallas Cowboys. And he now is a photographer for the Catholic Diocese of Dallas. You can go to his website, look him up, ronsaintangelo.com. Com. Make sure that's R O N S T Angelo.com. Because yes. I'm thinking sometimes they say Ron S A I N T. Right. But Ron S T Angelo.com. Perfect. Well, we're delighted to have you. Nice to be with you. And we're excited to introduce you to our EWTN family, a good Catholic boy that you are. And um, But we want you to tell our family a little bit about yourself. When we were talking back in the green room, you really uh, discovered your love for, for photography back in high school. After high school, you enlisted in the Navy. Thank you for your service. Thank you. So tell our family how all this evolved. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, first, I'm part of the EWTN family. There Myself, I'm, <laughs> I watch your programs quite a bit. I'm from uh, Texas. I'm a native Texan. I uh, grew up in East Texas. I uh, actually grew up with uh, Jimmy Johnson, who was eventually the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. He was from Port Arthur. I was from Beaumont. Well, you knew him before his time. I knew of okay. him. Okay. I didn't know we played Port Arthur, and they used to tear us up in football. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't that good. Uh, I was actually on the tennis team. Uh, played, I lettered in tennis. But I uh, went to all football games, yeah. which we were better. Yeah. Uh, but Jimmy's school was always really good. Um, and then um, 
got interested in photography, had an opportunity uh, to be a part of the building of the department. Um, and when I got my first camera that was issued to us, uh, you know, by the department, we were able to take photographs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we mentioned at the outset we don't have to spend a lot of time, but we're so grateful to have a veteran with us. Mm -hmm. And then you enlisted during the Vietnam War, such a controversial time and so on. And am I right that you served two, two tours there? That's correct. And Navy guy? Mm -hmm. And what kind of ship were you on? I was on a U.S. Navy destroyer. Navy destroyer. And uh, that is a, it's, it's, a, it's like an escort ship, a lot with aircraft carriers, battleships, mm -hmm. task forces. Uh, but we also did a lot of work with the Marines uh, because we could go upriver. Uh, and a lot of the fighting uh, in Vietnam was upriver. Uh, and they moved a lot of supplies, ordnance, and things like that, and we would try and, you know, help them take that out. So we would take Marines with us upriver and usually give them fire support uh, on their missions. Mm -hmm. And so that was, but we went all over the Far East, but spent most of our time mm -hmm. uh, off, the, off the coast of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. well, one of the big themes in reality in your life, and I'm sure, you know, it's a relationship, is God. <laughs> you know, you, you felt his guiding hand upon you, preserving you, keeping you. And it seems from our just study of you that that's only deepened as time has gone on. Um, so share with us about God's place in your life, you know, pre-Vietnam, Vietnam. And, and I, I know as we ask questions and so on, it'll, it'll develop. I know Joanna, you know, you had a big piece as we were asking you to tell us about your life. Uh, share a little bit about her and the significance of her in your life. Well, um, starting out, uh, it's very difficult to try and m become a professional as a photographer. And I had met my wife. Uh, she was a model. Uh, I met her, and she was uh, being a model for me uh, to let me photograph her. Uh, I bas basically met her on her 24th birthday, which will be this Friday, uh, will, will be uh, her birthday. And she likes to say, I got Ron for my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, we were both working independently, side jobs, and then doing our photography and that sort of thing on the side. And she went to work so that I could become a photographer. She knew I wanted to have the dream of that. Um, and it was, her name means gift from God, mm -hmm. Joanna. Mm -hmm. And her mother, um, sainted lady, uh, named her that after Joanna yeah. at the cross. Mm -hmm. And I believe God is, has strong favor in her and she's like an angel. Mm -hmm. uh, and she basically gave me the opportunity to pursue my dream, mm -hmm. um, to do this professionally. And one thing led to another, and we had a client that was needing photography of a cowboy, a Dallas Cowboy mm -hmm. uh, project, mm -hmm. and contacted us and wanted us to come up to Dallas to shoot it. Met with them, started shooting for the Cowboys, mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up moving up there okay. uh, to Dallas. Yeah. So you had the privilege of knowing Coach Landry, Tom Landry, a good Christian holy man, and also you were with Roger Staubach. What was that whole experience like? Yeah, what's the time like? period we're in with you in Dallas? Like, you know, uh, late 70s, late 70s. That's when it started? Um, and I, when I started work, shooting for yeah. the Cowboys, yeah, 79. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Tom Landry was still there, um, and he and I, I mean, he was like a father figure to me. Uh, Roger Staubach and his famous Hail Mary pass, yeah. and in a few weeks, uh, he will be inducting Drew Pearson mm -hmm. into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, my work was recently inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Your work was inducted? My mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboy photography mm -hmm. is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. And I'm very excited about that and have been sending them material to be exhibited uh, during those induction ceremonies, both mm -hmm. of Coach Johnson, who's going in, and Drew Pearson. Wow. Great. So that'll be coming up here shortly, yeah. about a month. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
Well, just I, you mentioned it just a little bit, but I'm trying to get again how you got into that network. Um, you must have been pretty proficient at what you were doing at this time. I mean, you were interested early on in your life. You do, you know, Vietnam. Thank, thank God you survived that. Uh, how did your level reach such a place, and how would they allow you to come in? Because I mean, they took you in like you're a team member. I mean, you're part yes. of the family, mm -hmm. the Dallas family. Well, I put a lot of time in perfecting my craft, and so when. I got that opportunity. It's most professional photographers, you have to deliver. Mm -hmm. And they were pleased with the work that I did. They give you another assignment. Mm -hmm. You do good there. The next thing you know, they go, we want you to come to Texas Stadium. This was in the 70s. So mm -hmm. that was like going to, <laughs> you know, the Taj Mahal or something. Right. Uh, and walking into Texas Stadium for the first time to photograph for the Cowboys. I was pinching myself. Mm -hmm. It was dream come true. Do I really um, have this gig? Exactly. Is this really happening to me? And more and more, uh, as you did it, it would, became a family. Mm -hmm. Like they took you in as part of their family. Mm -hmm. And it very much was like that. Yeah. And most of the people that were on staff there had been there for a long time. Yeah. And so once they accept you and you continue to deliver, um, and the work that I was submitting is not traditional sports photography. And anyone who wants to visit my website and see my work, I've got a, a gallery that's got my work and a collection on my website, SanAngeloSports.com, which is dedicated oh. purely to the Cowboys. Okay. The other one is, uh, right. is all my work. It's a collection of everything. So that was everything. SanAngeloSports.com? SanAngeloSports.com. And that's a museum uh, that goes all the way back to 1960 because I've had the opportunity to photograph all kinds of artifacts through the course of my career. And so I made it, I saved everything. Mm -hmm. And so I said, so many people can't see this stuff. So I just put it on my website so people can visit. When we go to your personal website, uh, Ron, Ron ST, uh, I think what's on there first is like this incredible ship. Yes. Ship and flag and these Navy guys. And what is that? that actually it's beautiful. Is, it's so powerful. That was photographed in San Francisco okay. at the NFC Championship game was the flag ceremony. That photograph was recently exhibited at the Pentagon uh, in the Navy Department. And it's hanging there on mm -hmm. exhibition right now. And I put the little story that this was the flag ceremony. Um, and I just kind of happened to capture the, the way the flag was, was very dramatic in the color. And then with all the sailors across the bottom, that, that cover shot it's is beautiful. like one of my favorite photographs. Talk to us, you know, you're saying you're not, you have your own style, you know, in terms of doing what you do and you do more than sports, but let's speak about the sports and the sure. Dallas Cowboys. What kind of images were you taking? I mean, I've seen a number of them. You know, there's a lot of, did you go to the games and you, you took pictures there? Did you do behind the scenes stuff? Because I saw a picture of Tom Landry, I don't know where you got, it was like he was right, I mean, I thought he was right there with the hat on, he was there. And it wasn't posed, but you got him somehow, some way. So tell us about the pictures and how you take them, your style, what makes you unique in that? One of the things that happens when you've been there a while is they, they get used to you being around. So they kind of forget you're there. And that's one of the things I try and do is blend into the background so that I'm watching them and looking for, as an artist, <laughs> I'm looking for lighting, I'm looking for position, points of view. But to answer your question, I would photograph at the stadium, road games, which mean you had a whole new environment. Mm -hmm. um, and back in those days, we were shooting film, not digital. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had to be very accurate with your, your camera. You had to catch the it. camera mm -hmm. would not mm -hmm. think for you. You had to like do everything manually. Wow. And I think the opportunity of being a storyteller, which is the way I describe my style, is that's the kind of images that I'm looking for. I'm looking for ways either as it presents itself yeah. or as I see something that I can then sort of frame it in such a way that it'll tell a story. Mm -hmm. right. there, there's a photograph that I saw the night before the game. I had a dream about it. It was for the <laughs> NFC Championship against Green Bay. Yeah. Uh, it would have been 1994 before the Super Bowl 30. And I had this idea and it only happened once. Um, of getting up behind the players yeah. over them as they enter the field right. 
and there's this fog that they yeah, put yeah. out special mm -hmm. that the players would walk through. They only did it once before they put the helmet in. Yeah. But I happened to be there. All the other photographers are shooting toward me, and I'm the only one shooting mm -hmm. back. And I'm Troy's walking out, and you see Texas Stadium yes. in front of him, and it, it was just the moment. Picture. But I had pre-visualized that, and then put myself in the position to capture that that image. That happens a lot. A lot of them are spontaneous, but it's because you're so in tune with your equipment that you're not thinking about it because sports happen so fast, especially NFL professional level. It's a very, very fast game. Mm -hmm. These are elite athletes that are like... Rapid speed. It is. Mm -hmm. They're like dancers or ballerinas mm -hmm. or ballet uh, is what I would describe it in sports. But you're like them because you're an elite photographer. Well, right? that's, I mean, that's quite are. a compliment. I mean, that, they must really respect, they get, this guy is top-notch you know, player at his field. We want you around, you're part of the family, you come on in, you know, like you, you're an athlete to them. Well, one of the great things about that is, is when you do come up with a really significant mm -hmm. photograph of these guys, yeah. and then you oh. give it to them. <laughs> right. And then, here, are, you know. Now and you're then, their best friend. <laughs> I remember one time I gave a shot to Troy Aikman. Yeah. And he must have really liked it or something. And he had been wearing this Dallas Cowboy hat in the locker room. And as soon as he was leaving, he came up to me and he gave me mm. that hat. Mm -hmm. He said, thanks yeah. for the photograph, yeah. you know. And I just thought that was a really personal thing. And I ended up doing a lot of personal work uh, for him and his family mm -hmm. uh, later on uh, when he had retired and uh, even when he was still a player. Um, so you actually build up friendships with these people. In Emmett Smith's case, I traveled with him to the Hall of Fame, did all of the Hall of Fame induction photography. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I met a lot of the folks up there, You've taken, actually. I don't know, maybe it's tens of thousands, if not a million shots just with Dallas over 30 years. Can you whittle it down to one or two that you're most proud of or are your favorite ones you feel good about it? Or it's well, iconic I know for other which people? one the fans like. Mm -hmm. I did a, pho a photograph of, it's called the triplets, Emmett, Michael, and Troy. Mm -hmm. They're walking off the field together after yeah. a touchdown. That photograph is the most mm -hmm. famous photograph in Dallas Cowboys history. It's been on several books, uh, covers. It was the lead article in the Pro Football Hall of Fame's um, website article that they wrote on me. They used that image to illustrate uh, my photography. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to say that was an image that preparation meeting opportunity and being able to capture it, knowing what you have in front of you. And the Cowboys came to me, uh, the Jones family, and they wanted that in the new stadium, the new AT&T yeah. stadium. They said, there's a lot of photographs of mm -hmm. the three together, but we think yours is the best. And we want to, you know, use it in, in the suites in the elevators mm -hmm. and different yeah. places when the, Tell me the if stadium. I'm, if I'm getting this right, but Emmett Smith, right? Did he break the rushing record? Yes. for Okay, so you knew you were there at that game. That yes. was coming up. Mm -hmm. Good chance he would do with that game. Yes. What was it like for you and trying to capture that moment? If you, you know, like how does that all work? I mean, everybody in the United States at least is looking at this and you're there on the field and his movement is like whatever, but to tell us about that. Did you get it like when he broke the record? You, you got him right I there? was right there. <laughs> uh, and, and this is, this yeah. is where Providence, yes. I would say, plays a hand because I had a friend of mine who was, I was using an assistant on the other side because action can break either way. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss that mm -hmm. shot. <laughs> so when he broke the record, yeah. I got, it came right at me, mm. and, I, and I got great stuff. And I looked at the film on the other camera, at the same moment, there was not one usable shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was oh just a God. difference of a few yards mm -hmm. that opened where I could see into where he was running and capture that moment. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of pressure both on him and on me to not miss <laughs> right. because that's a once in a lifetime. Right. And believe me, when it happened, the, the lights and the flashes in the stadium were like, mm -hmm. you know, at a major concert or something, mm -hmm. like a major yeah. star coming out or that's something. Incredible. But that's incredible. You know, what a gift because, <laughs> I mean, it, it is. It's, it's just being in the right place, right time, and all of your skill and all of your talent. And, and he then all of, God too. And, and God, right? You get the forces of heaven working for you. <laughs> that helps. And yeah, so it's like, um, we're not going to miss the shot. This is going to happen. And that. I'm not that lucky. <laughs> right, right, and that's and that's the humility 
of the beauty of you is that you get it, you all the honor, all the glory goes to God. It's like he's just, as Mother Teresa would say, I'm just the pencil in his hand. Yes. And he's, you know, you're just the eyes behind We're going to take a break camera. and we're going to hold you over uh, for the next segment. So yeah. we're going to talk more. I hope you're enjoying Ron St. Angelo and what a great craft is photography. Um, but he says God is with him and God's grace. So you work to do the best you could do, but God's grace has been with him in Vietnam in his photographic work. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're at home with Jim and Joy, and we have a wonderful conversation with Ron St. Angelo. And we want to talk about your famous photograph about the stadium towers there. So tell our family about that. Okay, this is a <coughs> very interesting story, uh, as many of them are, but this is a very unique one. Um, there was, early in the 90s, uh, an idea I had of taking an like an aerial view, let's say if you were in a helicopter or something, mm -hmm. of Texas Stadium at a Monday night football game. Because with the hole in the roof, the light would come out of the right. stadium, and mm -hmm. I said, that would make a really great photograph. Mm -hmm. So it just so happened that I realized across the street was a really tall tower mm -hmm. at the University of Dallas, which I, at the time, didn't know it was a Catholic university. Um, but I just went to the administration building, told them I was with the Cowboys and I wanted to make a photograph. And they said, if you think you can get up there with a camera, mm -hmm. uh, with climb those stairs, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. And they were very nice and got their security to let me in. And I never went ahead to test it. I just decided to do it because I didn't want to be intimidated mm -hmm. by it. So I just started climbing and it was a long climb, <laughs> but I got there early. And by the time I got up there with the pigeons that <laughs> happened to be at the top that I didn't mm -hmm. know about, uh, I had the perfect angle at the stadium. Uh, the only other thing that was happening, and this is something natural that I didn't realize till I was up there, is that it's really windy mm -hmm. when you get up at that height. Mm -hmm. And so I had to tie my camera down because it was going to be a long exposure. Uh -huh. In those uh -huh. days, it was maybe a 10 second exposure. Mm -hmm. So any movement on the camera would blur the photograph. And I ended up making maybe, I would say not more than 10 or 12 exposures. Um, and got this wonderful photograph that's a signature image. In fact, I went back when they destroyed the stadium to, it, they did an implosion. I went to the exact same place and mm -hmm. photographed it the From second there. time mm -hmm. when it took the stadium down and Jerry moved out to the new stadium. Mm -hmm. So it also happened that later I'm now a student at the University of right. Dallas and I found out when I first went to class there I saw a whole tribute to Robert Newhouse, mm -hmm. who was a famous running back for the Dallas Cowboys and a very close friend of mine mm -hmm. with the team. He was a former yeah. player, but on the staff. And I couldn't understand why Robert Newhouse was at University of mm -hmm. Dallas. And wow. it turned out he graduated with a master's degree. He used to go over after practice before showering so he wouldn't miss class and graduate with a master's at uh, University of Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Robert and I later became friends. We actually both went to college at the University of Houston, and he starred down there as a running back um, before being drafted by the Cowboys mm -hmm. and being a really great player for the Cowboys. He sadly passed away a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, but I just thought the, the sort of the symmetry between mm -hmm. those things mm -hmm. weren't accidental. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these things, I don't find out till later, not when they happen. And then years later, I see that and I'm going, mm. that is the power no of accident. that captured moment. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Ron, thanks so much for just Thank opening you. up a little bit about your life and your photography, your heart for it, God in the midst of it. We look forward to speaking some more tomorrow about this and, and having you back. 
So we hope that you've enjoyed the conversation today and there's various crafts and professions that we're in. Let's yield everything to God. Mm. Let's see what God can do with our gifts and our talents and our abilities. You're an important part of this EWTN family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.